I'll try to put the questions on right now, so there should, because it was done in a hurry. Okay, this question says the person stands, hands at his side on a platform that is rotating at a rate of, is it 1.3, 1.30? 1.30 revolutions per second. He raises his arms to a horizontal position. The speed of rotation decreases to 0 0.80 revolutions per second. Why? So the first part, you know, sometimes you miss one part of the question. The first part says, why does it decrease? And your answer should be, because his rotational inertia increases, right? Is that right? Because he's raising his arms. The distribution of the particles goes away from the axis, so the rotational inertia increases. That's why the angular speed has gone down. And the second one says, by what factor has this changed? So you use the conservation of angular momentum because there is no external torque acting. You would use I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2. and simply set it up as a ratio. I'm still trying to explain the first part. You can see if I2 is greater than I1, omega 2 is less than omega 1. Now that's the second part. You know that angular velocity is 2 pi times frequency, as I told you. So the 2 pi's will, of course, get canceled. And you will just have to take that ratio. And I hope you got that. So the new rotational inertia is 1.625. But you know, look at the question. By what factor has his moment of inertia changed? So is my answer correct? By what factor? Therefore, that means how many times? So you don't have to take the difference, okay? It's how many times, so that's the answer, 1.6 times. The initial moment of inertia is 4.6. What is the final moment of inertia? Goodness, this is direct. The only thing was the first frequency was not directly given, isn't it? Said one revolution every two seconds, so you had to think just a little bit and say, okay, that is 0.5 revolutions per second. And the final is given, so what is the final moment of inertia? Did you get 0 0.7? 0 0.77. 0 0.77. Okay, if you did that, go to the next problem. Don't wait. Now, I'll have to say there is no external torque acting. That's why angular momentum is conserved. Therefore, I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2, the same thing. So I2 is I1 times omega 1 by omega 2. I1 is given as 4.6. You know that omega is 2 pi times the frequency, which I explained is 0.5. So finally, you get 0.77 kilogram meter squared. How does she accomplish this change? That's the second part. How does she physically accomplish this change? The figure skater, how does she manage to change? What? Brings her arms in. That's it. This is accomplished by pulling her arms to the center or towards the axis. That means pulling her arms in because the moment of inertia has decreased. Isn't it? That's it. That is number two. This question says, what is the angular momentum of a figure skater spinning at 3.5 revolutions per second with arms in close to her body? Assuming her to be a uniform cylinder with a height of 1.5 meter, a radius of 15 centimeter, and a mass of 55 kilograms. So, so you got it? OK, we'll do that. Uh, later. Is that what you were trying to do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one, how would you find the rotational inertia of the cylinder? So we need uh, uh, M equals M equals uh, M over 2 over 
a mass squared over 2. Because I told you the thickness of the cylinder doesn't matter. I told you this clearly. It's only mass times radius squared divided by 2. Because the thickness is already taken into account when you consider the mass. Okay. Therefore, you'll have to find mr squared by 2 first. Again, the height of 1.5 meter doesn't matter because that becomes the thickness of the cylinder, isn't it? Okay, so when you do that, what do you get? When you do that, I don't know if this is the problem, maybe another problem that, you know, because I is equal to mr squared by 2, 55 times 0.15 because it's in centimeters. Is this what you told me? 0 0.62 approximately kilogram meter squared. So remember, you do not need the height. In this case, the height is the thickness. You don't need it. You only read, need the mass and the radius in meters. That is part A. Not, not quite. That's just I. And now you'll have to multiply it with omega. Because angular momentum is I omega. I'm slowing down, so I give you a chance to go ahead of me. That's my intention. So once again, omega is 2 pi times f, isn't it? So if you did that, you would have got 2 pi times 3.5, which gives you 22 radians per second. Do not forget the units. And so L is I omega. Multiply those two numbers. And you would get the answer as 13.6 kilogram meters squared per second. Well, approximately 14, considering the significant figure stuff. Okay, in the second part, torque is dl by dt, change in angular momentum by time, change. Okay. I hope you took it as 0 minus 14 because change is always final takeaway initial, isn't it? Okay. So final is 0 because she has stopped. So minus 2.8 and also notice the unit of torque is meter newton because it is distance multiplied by force. R cross F. Okay. If you don't visualize the problem, you're not going to do it. The person is standing at the center of a rotating merry-go-round. So I see that. Oh, the radius is three meter. And I could even visualize that it's big, isn't it? Three meters, radius. The moment of inertia is 920. That's huge. 920, because the mass of this thing should be really big. Is the mass of the platform given? It's the mass of the person. You think about all this. The platform rotates without friction. Mm -hmm. No friction. With an angular velocity, that's omega. And the person walks radially to the edge of the platform. Now, what do you mean by radially? It means along the, along the radius. Along the radius. He could have walked zigzag. Is he doing that? No. He's going straight from the center to the edge along the radius. So you have to see that, and that's a very important point in this problem. Why? Because when he does that, he does not create an external torque. If he had walked zigzag, yes, there would have been an external torque. You know, because it's a zigzag motion. Now, this is motion where he's going along the radius. So as he's continuously walking, is the moment of inertia of this system changing? No. Because no the, the system, this system is made of two objects. One is the platform. The other is the, the person. 
My question is, is isn't the person walking further away from the center? Yeah. Okay, and don't we know that moment of inertia is given by MR squared for an object? Because you treat this person as a point object now. And since he's shifting away from the axis, his moment of inertia is increasing, isn't it? So when his moment of inertia increases, the total moment of inertia of the platform plus this person is also increasing. Now, when the moment of inertia increases, what happens to the angular speed? What should happen? It should slow down. It should decrease. Now, you have thought all this before you write anything. When you get to this point, that's when problems in physics will become easy. I know it's tough for a student to do this, because you're used to first number, 75. Second number, three meter. Don't waste time. You see everything that's happening. OK, and then says, calculate the angular velocity when the person reaches the edge. And I've not written anything down yet. OK, I got the idea. Conservation of angular momentum. And I continue reading. B, calculate the rotational kinetic energy of the system of Platform plus person before and after. Hmm. Then you start thinking, what's the formula for rotational kinetic energy? One half I omega squared. So there is an omega before, there is an omega after, there is an I before, there is an I after. Are you getting it? Put those two, you get it. Now you begin doing the problem. When you start doing problems like this, and know that the first three minutes is to be spent in reading, getting the information, visualizing, getting the concept, then you turn this into a physics class. Otherwise, it becomes a math class with no purpose. The actual math classes have a purpose, because that's what you intend to do there, right? Here you're trying to use the math in the concept. You miss the concept and write some formulas. Don't do that. Go ahead. Finish it. Okay, so in this question, radial walk does not produce a torque. I told you that, right? So there is no external torque acting. That's why the angular momentum before and the angular momentum after are the same. And I tried to put it this way. Let me explain that. This is the moment of inertia of the platform. Hold on. So in the first case, when the man is standing at the center, don't I even have to consider him? Because his radius is zero. He's right at the center, isn't it? He doesn't contribute anything. But second time, yes, he does. Now I'll have to add the moment of inertia of the platform, which is the same as before, plus the moment of inertia of the man. Are you with me? OK. So I rearrange, make omega 2 the subject. That's what you're asked to find. And then plug in the numbers. This is given as 920. Omega 1 is 2 radians per second. And see how the moment of inertia of the man is calculated. Can you catch something? I missed something. Yeah, it's 75 times 3 squared. Hopefully, I'll notice along the line somewhere. If I don't, I caught the mistake before you. OK. Uh, oh, OK, I did. Check that. So that is, just check the calculation. I should have corrected it. It's 1.2 radian per second. Isn't it slower than the other one? Surely, we expected it to be smaller. We got it. Is anybody getting one point? Yes. All right, second part, you have to find the kinetic energy before and after. Now, before, kinetic energy initially. The I stands for initial. Before is I times, half times, IP omega 1 squared. IP is 920. which gives me 1.8 times 10 to the 3 joules. And after, or final, now you'll have to add 
the moment of inertia of the platform with the moment of inertia of the man times omega 2 squared. <coughs> what is it? Hmm. Okay. And that gives me Approximately 100 and, uh, I mean, 11, 1100, 1100. Did I forget to put a square again? Goodness, what's happening to me? Check this also out, because right now I do not see a square here. Check it out. Is it that I forgot, or is it? Okay, so I had forgotten to put the square there, so it's 1148 joules. And the reason why it's smaller is because the angular velocity has gone down. Uh, since we have done a similar problem, I'm not going to give you much time. Rather, I'm not able to. Again, the same kind of situation, but how many people do we have here? Four people standing on the ground, each of mass 65 kilograms, suddenly step onto the edge. <coughs> Together, they step onto the edge. What is the angular velocity of the merry-go-round now? Okay, that's the question, and you should be able to do it. When they step onto the edge, definitely each one is adding to the moment of inertia of the system, isn't it? And each one is going to add mass times the radius squared. So you've got to multiply that with 4. Here it is. Again, the conservation of angular momentum, because they just step onto the edge, assuming that there is no external torque. I want omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2, and we are asked to find omega 2. Ah, that's the merry-go-round. Merry-go-round, okay. <laughs> Plus the moment of inertia of the people. There's only a little bit of math there, nothing else. Four times, because there are four people involved. Is that right? And then 0 0.80. The merry-go-round has 1760 plus four times the mass of each person, which is 65 kilogram, times the square of the radius. And the answer is 0.48 radians per second. 